This is not a teaching curriculum. You're not right. going to learn anything <laughs> yes. that you should ever use out there. Do not try this at home. This is entertainment. Disclaimers. <laughs> Usually there's a couple different kinds of sutures, right? There's ones that are you know, curved needles. See that one's kind of curved, a little drawing on them. And there's ones that are straight. See how that looks a little triangle there? That's called a cutting needle. That's made for going through skin and stuff like this. So this is a needle driver. Okay, it's basically a little clamp, right? It's got these little clippy teeth on it to hold it together. Once you click them in, you pop it sideways to get it to open up. So I take this, catch the needle like that. And then the trick is when you go, oh, I don't have any tweezers. Because you won't probably have tweezers either, unless you have like, something in your Swiss Army knife. So you're basically picking through. All right, catch the one side, and then you come back under, and you just, and again, this is really shallow. This is just through the skin. I barely even touch the muscle underneath. You get kind of even it up. Come out the same side over here. Catch it again with the needle driver, kind of curl it out. When I tie them, I tie them one hand in the operating room. I tie them like this. Oh wow, that was cool. Because that's how I tie it. Let me cut this one, I'll show you. So you normally don't do that many ties? No, no, you that's the thing. For, this is made out of silk. Okay. There's different kinds of suture material too, like what the stitch itself is, the thread is made out of. Silk, you only need to tie it three or four times maybe to, to keep it from unknotting. There's two, like that. Catch it, bring it out. So what you guys would probably do is what's called a two-handed tie or an instrument tie, right? Easy, the easiest thing is an instrument tie. The one with the needle on it, take this, the, you take your needle driver, come in to catch it, wrap around once like that, mm -hmm. and then grab the other end and you pull it through. Now we're going to see how the tail's off this side now. Yep. Come the opposite way, come under it, circle that way, now grab it. You just keep going back and forth and that's how you tie them down. So you're doing individual sutures, it's not like a, like sewing something up where the thread keeps... Well, so there's a reason to do that and there's a reason not to. If you're out in the woods, let's say, let's say you did have to sew this guy back up again in the middle of nowhere. You'd rather have individual sutures because you're going to be walking and hiking and trying to get out of there and you're not, you're not going to be laying, taking it easy. You're going to be working, right? So let's say one of these pops, right? If you have only one suture that's thread through the whole thing and it pops and guess what happens? The whole thing's... Oh, you know, that's really they, clever. They pop right? You don't want that. that I didn't that think of that. makes sense. Right? You want... Oh, these are called interrupted sutures. So you want it to be interrupted. You do not want it to be a running suture. 